Hi, I'm Chris Rowan. I'm the CTO of the IP group of Cadence, and I'm going to talk today about some of the key metrics for embedded neural networks. As we've talked about before, this idea of neural networks as a way to recognize and act on a wide variety of kinds of patterns and data that we find in the world is really becoming quite pervasive. And that means that it's important that our cell phones, our cars, our refrigerators, our televisions, in fact, all kinds of devices around us may need to be enabled to do sophisticated recognition based on what kind of data they sample. But what does it take to do good recognition? Now, as we found out, we, f we know that we want to apply some sort of a filter, a weighting function, lots and lots of time to the sequences of data. Perhaps in two or three dimensions in image data, in audio data we may be listening to a continuous stream of speech and be applying these sophisticated filters uh, to it in order to construct these layers of feature maps. Now, when we do this computation, what's really involved? we find that there are a number of fairly key uh, mathematical operations that we need to do. First of all, there are multiplies. That in a popular system like a convolutional neural network, we really are relying on uh, weight times data uh, sum of products, which is really just uh, multiplication. But we're also going to need to do things like uh, pooling of data in order to find regions of interest, regions of, uh, of commonality to use together. And that sometimes is done by averaging or by taking the maximum over a small region. So we have some local arithmetic operations that have to be done uh, in very large numbers. We will also typically have some saturation function, which is usually some nonlinear function there are functions like uh, hyperbolic tangent or sigmoid or a function called a relu, which is really a form of, of max operation, which represents a, a way to uh, make these operations trigger in a sense. And we have lots of data operations. Data operations to manipulate the data, to move the data around, to reorganize it. This is particularly true because the amount of computation involved in one of these neural networks can be trillions of operations per image. So at a high data rate, you may be uh, having trillions or tens of trillions of operations per second being required across these different kinds of functions. And so it becomes very important to have the right set of operations, the right weights, in order to keep the total computational load uh, within reason. And in fact, we can look at the performance of a neural network along two important axes. One, of course, is its accuracy. How well does it predict? How well does it capture the pattern? What is its recognition rate? And there are a number of different fine details in terms of metrics there. But we want something that comes as close as possible to recognizing every instance of the uh, object or pattern of interest in the input. We also care a lot about how much compute, how many of these operations. And in fact, in many of the cases, it's really about the multiplies that dominate so that we ideally want something that's very high accuracy and very low compute. That would be ideal. But in reality, there's a trade-off. There are many ways that we can design these weights. How large are the kernels? How many layers? How many different feature maps are used? And so what we typically find is that we can design networks along some sort of a trade-off, that we can have more computationally intensive networks that achieve higher accuracy rates, and in order to uh, get the compute down, we may need to uh, give up some accuracy. But there is constant progress being made in order to find ways to gradually migrate these curves more and more to the upper left. That is, finding better trade-offs where 
we can improve the absolute accuracy rate, we can reduce the compute load at the same accuracy, and can make uh, solutions which are more and more amenable to embedded implementation because then we can have lower power, we can have higher accuracy rate, we can have better real-time performance uh, when we do the right job in optimizing the network and optimizing the implementation of this on these target applications. There are a couple of other metrics that we care about as well. As we do this trade-off, we don't just care about how many multiplies, for example, but what is the difficulty of those multiplies? Are they 8 by 8 integer multiplies, or 16 by 16, or 32 by 32, or are they in floating point? Because that will have a big impact on the uh, degree of compute resources, how much hardware, how much energy is going to be required. And we care a lot about how many weights are required in a network because all things being equal, a network which has fewer weights is going to require less bandwidth to bring those weights in to uh, implement this, this network. So the key metrics for embedded neural networks are going to be how much compute, how much accuracy, what kind of compute, how many weights, and what bandwidth is required to do those computations. And at Cadence, we're hard at work on optimizing all of those parameters and coming up with more and more efficient mechanisms and better and better networks that allow a wide range of different applications to take advantage of this powerful general technique of neural networks.